Have you ever wondered how great artists, musicians, and composers like BT learn about FM synthesis? Have you ever wondered how DX7 and FM synth pros like PowerDX7 can make some amazing sounds that you thought impossible with a DX7? Watch this video and find out how pros learn and make amazing FM sounds. In this video, I want to share a success story of a subscriber learning FM synthesis like a pro by watching PowerDX7 FM synthesis tutorials. So, this is a story about the subscriber Yotam Cohen. Yes, he was able to pick a right algorithm for making a brand new, amazing DX7 pipe patch. He contacted me about watching one of the DX7 tutorials for creating a new pipe patch. When I asked viewers to pick a light algorithm to make a new vibe patch, he got it right. So, how do you learn FM synthesis and pick light algorithms for a specific sound design? You've probably seen many FM synthesis tutorials that tell you its algorithms for that. But, if you haven't seen Party X7 tutorials, that will help you to open your eyes and explore amazing possibility of FM sound design, then you can start from this tutorial video. So, let's look into algorithm a bit deeper. Before doing that, if you want to learn the very basics of FM synthesis, you can watch this 7 minutes FM basic video to get started. So, what I'm going to cover in this video. First, we will go over basics of algorithms. Second, we will get into the most important aspect of FM sound design, to pick the right algorithm. Algorithm is probably the most scariest part of FM synthesis. They don't look like anything you've ever seen with more familiar subtractive synthesis. No VCO, no VCF, no VCA, and the six little boxes arranged in many different ways. Some say they look like an alien language, and I can agree with that. When I started out back in 1986, I had no idea what I was looking at, what algorithms are, and how they work in the DX7. So, don't worry, if you don't know anything about algorithms, we will go through together and you will learn how they are important in FM sound design. Because FM synthesis uses sine wave or harmonic power waveforms, you need this arrangement called algorithm to create a sound through frequency modulation and or additive synthesis. For the DX7, there are 32 algorithms to choose from and they are grouped into four major groups. The first group is stacking algorithms. You have two to four operators stacked on top of one another with two or three towers in total. When you have three or more operators stacked on top of one another, you can get higher harmonic frequency modulation, like a string sound, for example. The famous DX7 EPN1 patch uses algorithm 5. The second group is branching algorithms. You have two to four operator stacking with one carrier or two towers you can get higher harmonic frequency modulation as well. With branching, you can introduce a sideband of various harmonics and inharmonics to make the DX7 sound richer. 
The best example is the famous DX7 Bass 1 that was used in so many 80s songs. It has sharp and harmonic rich metallic tone as well as rich side band to create a unique DX7 bass sound. The third group is routing and tower combination algorithms. You have two or three operators stacked on top of each other with carrier-only operators in some algorithms. You will start using more additive synthesis in this group with less frequency modulation. The famous DX7 vibe sound uses algorithm 23. The fourth group is branch and tower combination algorithms. You have two or three operators stacking with more carrier-only operators. Algorithm 32 is a pure additive synthesis algorithm with no frequency modulation. The famous DX7 E organ uses algorithm 32. Now, you understand the basics of algorithms, but unfortunately, that's just not enough. So, how do you get to choose the right algorithm? Well, it is possibly the most difficult and crucial part of FM synthesis sound design. Why? First, if you don't have a right algorithm, no matter what you do with envelopes, ratio, or output levels, you can't get the sound that you want. Second, you never know which algorithm is right fit until you try it out. So, choosing a right algorithm is not a pure luck, but it's all about understanding how algorithms can be swapped to one another. And this is where the Part X7 concept introduced a while ago comes in. It's all about algorithm interchangeability. Now, some of you've already learned this in Part X7 FM synthesis tutorials, but we will expand this topic further. Let's find the example and expand that topic. Many people buy the DX7 or use DEX or DX7V because they just need to get that famous DX7 EPN1 patch. It's gentle and subtle, but it lacks solid and sharp attack sounds. If you play it live or record it with many competing tracks, it just don't have enough presence. So, how do you make a new EPN1 sound? Well, let's start with looking at its algorithm. It uses algorithm 5 which belongs to the group 1 stacking algorithm. Algorithm 5 has three towers and each tower is used for a particular purpose. Tower 1 is used for the main metallic tone. Tower 2 and 3 are used for medium and high harmonic tones and they are detuned to give the nice chorusing effect. Now, you may be able to adjust output level of tower 1 to get a bit more metallic tone, but that's about it. A sound with solid and sharp attack often requires a hammer tone to introduce additional inharmonics to give that sound with amazing presence. 
So, this is a Part X7 version of the Beefed Up EPN1. So, how do you get to have that kind of solid and sharp e-piano with amazing presence? It all comes down to algorithm interchangeability. This has two purposes. First, we can easily swap from one algorithm to another with minimum changes. Second, it's about maximizing the limited number of six operators to get maximum sound design possibility. This is so important because we only get six operators and nothing we can do about that. But what we can do is to use them in a way that maximizes flexibility and the capability of the DX7 FM synthesis. So, how do we get the PowerDX7 e-piano? As we know, using algorithm 5, we are very limited in sound design possibility. If you happen to have a lot of time to go through a lot of e-piano-like patches on the internet, you will still find that many of them still use algorithm 5, and they sound very similar to the original e-piano 1 with not much presence. If we decided to keep algorithm 5, then we sacrifice one power for hammer tone. We will lose either the main metallic tone or that smooth chorusing effect. And that's not the answer by part X7. The answer is to apply the algorithm interchangeability to explore different possibilities with different algorithms beyond algorithm 5. So, which algorithms are similar and can be easily swapped with algorithm 5? Let's pause for a few minutes and look for algorithms that you think they will be a good fit. I have identified several algorithms. First, you have algorithm 7, 8 and 9. If you look closely, you have two towers with two operators stacking. Operator 3, 5, and 6 form a 3 operator stacking tower, which can produce higher harmonic modulation. And this is not needed for emulating the original e piano sound. Second, you have algorithm 12 and 13. Instead of 3 carriers in algorithm 5, algorithm 12 and 13 uses operator 5 as a modulator. Also note that algorithm 13 has feedback on operator 6, which is the same as algorithm 5. So we can choose algorithm 13 instead of algorithm 5 for the PowerDX7 e-piano. You still need to adjust many parameters, but at the end, you get a new e-piano that goes beyond the original e-piano. And of course, this is just an example. You can apply the algorithm interchangeability in any sounds that you want to create. Another benefit of this is that you can try out different algorithms and choose one that is most suitable. Often in FM synthesis, you just don't know which algorithm works best. So you need to experiment and find the one that works well. Now the subscriber, Yotan, watched the DX7 Vibe Sound Design tutorials and he understands the algorithm interchangeability. So, 
You can do that too to learn FM synthesis and start FM sound design like a pro, like the Party X7. You can actually apply the same approach for the DX7 famous two bells and flutings to beef them up so that you get amazing patches with solid and sharp sounds. There are links provided in the description, so feel free to check those great DX7 tutorials and learn more about FM synthesis. You will learn basics and advanced FM synthesis and learn about algorithms in details. You will also learn how algorithm interchangeability is applied and you get to make new patches with easy to follow and step-by-step -step instructions. RDX7 FM Synthesis tutorials are comprehensive and full of details, tips and tricks. You can learn them to develop your FM Synthesis sound design skills. So, be like a pro and learn from a DX7 FM Synthesis expert, PowerDX7. Thank you for supporting the PowerDX7 channel and see you later.